Are you thinking of renting out your property but you're totally clueless about it? Well, in this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know about renting out your property in Singapore so that you can understand how to get the best tenant with the right terms and condition for your property. And make sure to stay all the way to the end because I'm going to share with you ways in which you can lower down your income tax when it comes to renting out your property. Hi, my name is Caleb and where I help homeowners like you make the best decisions when it comes to your property needs in Singapore. If you are new here, make sure you click the subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video can be found in the description box below. Renting out your property is typically quite a lucrative investment where you will get someone paying you monthly rental while reducing your outstanding loan amount throughout your years. However, there are some things you might need to know when it comes to renting out your property. In this video, I'm going to share with you three things you need to know. Here's what's going to be covered in today's video. The entire timeline and process in finding a tenant, what are the finances involved in renting out your property, and also lastly, what are the repairs involved during the tenancy period. So let's jump right straight into it. So when it comes to the timeline of the renting out of your properties, here's what you need to know so first step is that you need to understand what are your requirements secondly is about marketing your properties and thirdly is about viewing my prospective tenant the fourth stage will be the offer discussion what are terms and conditions and i'll dive straight into it later fifth is signing of agreement and lastly the handover of keys so first understanding your requirements what are the types of tenants you want that's important to you because typically in singapore when you rent out your whole unit there are three different types of tenants in singapore first is those transitory tenants typically they are singaporeans waiting for their bto or waiting for their private condo to be finished building up so during this one two years period they need a place to transition while waiting for their condos to be built the pros and cons of this is that the pros is that they typically don't need any furniture because they have their own furniture in place already however the cons is that they might only stay here for two years after that their condo is ready they will need to move already second type is where it's a foreign family where the families will consist of uh, one husband and one wife and two, two kids where typically it could be an expat family or it could be a where only the husband is working only thirdly is where professionals and students they are sharing the accommodation together such that they could be friends or they could be colleagues working together in a in a similar look uh, job similar company and they share the entire rent together so typically it boils down to these three groups of tenants uh, both has its own pros and cons at the end of the day if let's say you want someone that can stay long in the rental period in your property you could consider a foreign family where they could rent probably two years four years or even six years and they renew quite often so that's something that you can consider as well also the second thing about understanding your requirements is what are the types of furnishing you should you would like to provide so when it comes to furnishing there are also three different kinds first is where it's unfurnished so typically that's only when lights kitchen cabinets and toilet fittings are provided so pretty rare because usually the um when it comes to renting people mostly fall into the second and third category the second category is where it's partial furnished what comes together with partial furnish is where it comes with lights curtains fridge washer and aircon and there is no furniture at all so typically um, this kind of situation itself um, it's good to rent out as a partial furnish so that you do not need to worry that where the furniture break down the sofa is uh, stained or is cracked or the bed bed is broken and stuff like that so typically I would prefer my clients to use partial furnish However, the last scenario is where it's fully furnished. Typically, fully furnished comes along in most HDB renter because uh, the HDB renters typically has uh, all their furniture when they are staying in there, in there and they need to move somewhere else. So when it comes to renting out fully furnished, they will have the uh, partial furnish and it comes together with living room furniture, beds and wardrobes as well. And third thing you need to understand is whether the lease period, whether you want to go for one year or two years, Singapore minimum it's about six months for HDB and three months for private. But most people would want to rent for at least one year or two years or so because they want the hassle of finding new tenants again and again. Next thing is you need to understand your requirement is when you're going to start and who pays for utility. Typically, if let's say you're renting out the whole unit, uh, utilities is payable by the tenant 
same goes for the Wi-Fi as well. Sometimes Wi-Fi you want to provide for them and you want to get the uh, tenant to reimburse, you could as well. So for town councils and maintenance fee, all this is uh, typically paid by the landlord and also for property tax as well, it's payable by the landlord, okay? The next step is actually marketing your property. You can get an agent to do for you, which is like myself. You can get me to help you with it. Or you can do it on your own to get the tenants through the different market marketplace like Facebook Marketplace or Carousel where you take good quality photos and like wide angle photos and or you do a walkthrough video to capture the tenants such that they are interested in the property and eventually come and view a property. And importantly, you have to qualify your tenants according to your requirements. What's important to you or you could have shared it to your agent or you could have have your own set of criteria that you feel you, you want it as well. So when it comes to viewing, uh, try to declutter as much as possible and then help tenant understand what comes with or what doesn't come with in a property as well because certain things you might want to take away, certain things you might want to leave it behind, the tenant doesn't know so you have to share it with them as well. If you have an agent, the agent would know what to do as well and you promote the nearby amenities. So the next stage is when someone comes in and offers a place. So typically when it comes to offering a place, there are a few things you need to discuss while offering the place. First thing such as offer price, what is the price to rent the place for? What is the start date? What is the furniture needed to include or remove? The number of packs staying in the unit because like what I said, the maximum units, uh, people that can stay in the house is only six packs. Uh, and how are they related to? So. Uh, and the lease period of the property as well and what are the responsibilities of the tenants later i'll go through in depth more on that what are the diplomatic clause is there a diplomatic clause when there is a diplomatic clause it's only suitable for a foreign family where the uh, main tenant is is on an employment pass such that after one year of the lease they could if let's say they are being terminated by the company and needs to go back to other country, their home country or other countries abroad and not able to stay in Singapore, that's when they can exercise the diplomatic clause to pre-terminate the lease before the lease expires. Okay, and also discuss on the utilities and Wi-Fi charges as well. All right. So during the signing of tenancy itself it's important that uh, typically it's drafted by the landlord's agent it's important to discuss what is the security deposit if let's say for example the lease is one year the security deposit is typically one month if it's security deposit if the lease is two years then the security deposit will be two months and uh, typically the aircon servicing responsibility lies on the tenants where the tenants need to service uh, four times a year so if let's say the tenant service four times a year then the landlord is responsible for the aircon repair already so if let's say aircon re aircon breaks down then typically the landlord will need to uh, repair it for the tenant also so what is this minor repair clause minor repair clause basically if there is anything that breaks down in the in the house uh, that is not due to negligence of the tenant such as like for example water heater repairs water he water heater spoil or uh, cocoa hot spoil that's when uh, the tenant can ask for replacement or repair and the tenant will pay the first 150 and the landlord will pay the rest and also they discuss the option to renew clause such that during this period what are the option to renew after the end of the lease whether will there be an increment in terms of rental or is the rental cap at a certain amount and so on and so forth and in certain circumstances the landlord decides to sell within the entire tenancy period whether whether viewing is allowed or not allowed uh, typically viewing should be allowed uh, but it's always dependent on the tenant schedule as well so next thing is stamp duty stamp duty is payable by the tenant as well okay so during the handover of keys it's good to take photos of the condition of the house and have a condition report an inventory report of the entire house such that uh, during the entire handover, when you, when the tenant returns back, it will be as if it was handed back to them on the original condition. So it's good to take videos of the defects during handover as well, so that you know certain defects is there, certain defects is not there. Typically, I would do it for my clients, uh, so, so that they will know that during the time when we hand over is in this condition and after when we return back if it is not in this condition we might need to get a professional cleaner to reinstate into this condition as well and lastly is to highlight items that needs to be taken note by of by the tenant as well so 
if let's say certain things that the tenants take note of it and highlighted it that's when we need to document it down so that after two years or after four years when the tenancy ends we can match it together next thing we'll go into rent finances in terms of renting out your property so when it comes to finances what will the landlord typically get is that they will get, typically get the one month advance renter that's the first thing they will also get the one to two month security deposit depending on the lease period if it's a one year lease you'll get one year one month uh, security deposit if it is two years lease you get two months security deposit so and then a uh, landlord will also need to pay their own income tax and also, also landlord will need to pay their own town council fees maintenance fee and property tax fees so the tenants will need to pay their own utilities wi-fi and so on and so forth so and landlord will need to pay agent fee if they engage agent to rent out their property as well so during this period they are bound to have repairs needed during the tenancy period such as a uh, washing machine that spoils uh fan breaks down or water heater that breaks down that's when minor repair clause will come in where the tenant will pay the first 150 for the repairs and landlord will bear the remainder of course this is if the property is not due to any where uh negligence where the cooker hop crack or the washing machine uh has a clear negligent act done by the tenant itself so in such a situation where it is not a negligent act, then its uh, minor repair clause will come in. All right. So thanks for staying all the way to the end. Uh, one more thing that I want to share with you is that you could reduce your income tax by recognizing rental expense. So what are the rental expense you can recognize? So if you go to this IRAS website, there are a few things that the IRAS have mentioned that they recognize in terms of uh, expenses that they can uh, recognize so such as a uh, housing loan interest on the housing loan as well then property tax incurred during the rental period uh, fire insurance if paid for it repairs if done during the rental period as well maintenance of the entire house and to the management corporation as well uh, cost of securing ten tenants that includes the agents commission advertising and legal expense and so on and so forth okay then uh, the cost of supervision so at the end of the day when you file your income tax what happens is that uh, you write in the income uh, rental income that you have received followed by all the different expense that you incurred if let's say for example you never keep track of all these things what IRAs will do is that they will just take a 15% simplified claim for rental expense so they'll just deem 15% as rental expense for one property itself based on the rental income they have generated so so if you have any other questions with regards to renting out your property in Singapore or would like me to help you to rent out your property do feel free to drop me a text or click on the link below to whatsapp me once again I'm Caleb and I'll see you soon goodbye